Why is it wrong to have a relationship with someone of the same sex? I'm not saying what is and what isn't sin. I'm repeating what God has said is or what isn't sin. I have just as much of a problem with a male and female who are married in the church and are not open to life. I am not dating women because I've tasted and seen a better love, a deeper love, the love that my own little soul actually has been longing for since, since I was born. Hey, friend. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We've already been talking, so yes. we can uh, start more officially. Hello. Welcome to the podcast, Kim. Mm -hmm. It's great to be on. They're great. <laughs> All is. right. You're, you're a repeat here, so mm. people already have seen your lovely face, but... I'm back. You're back. Yeah. Invited back. We miss you in California, Kim. I miss California. It's good to be back. It's still home. You, you recently took off to somewhere else. Where are you now? I am now officially in Dallas. Dallas, Texas. I know. Do you like I, it? You, six days. I've been there six days okay. and I love it. Wow. I ab absolutely love it. I don't go outside a lot. <laughs> I stay inside. It's air conditioned. I do not love the heat, but the community, just the people. Mm. I genuinely, I'm like, okay, God, now I get it. Because I did not know why he was moving me. Wow. We yeah. still have good people in California. You know Lovely. that, right? Absolutely. I'm one of them. So. Right. There are special people in Dallas. That is true. It is. There, there's just a community like I haven't really seen. You, so. That's good. You need that for your ministry. So Absolutely. I, I want folks listening. We've done a couple episodes with you, but you have a new ministry out. Mm -hmm. So I'd love for you to share about Boldly Beloved. And then we're going to do some rundown, if it's okay with you, on some stuff happening in pop culture and get your commentary, especially on sexuality and identity Let's issues. Absolutely. All right. So what's Boldly Beloved? So I just realized like the Lord was doing so much in my personal life on regarding sexuality. And then I realized, oh my gosh, this is so much deeper than just my sexuality. This is actually my identity that I'm having an issue with. And then missions, I was doing missions work. And, and so it was just kind of these three key things for me um, that I saw in my own personal life. Like I didn't have sexuality under the Lord's leadership. Um, so my identity was off. I didn't know that I was a beloved daughter. I thought I was a daughter, but like one that wasn't really loved. <laughs> and then I was out doing missions trying to be loved. And so the Lord just kind of showed me my own life and was like, hey, if you've struggled with this, other people might too. And so just really hitting on these core things of who are we? What is our sexuality, right? And how does that align with our identity in Christ? And then now how do we live this out missionally as sons and daughters? And so, yeah, it's, it's been something that just has naturally kind of grown. Um, I didn't want another ministry, but really what it did was kind of encompass everything that God's been doing in my own personal life and that I share about. So I think, I think your story, Kim, is so important. I just, I think everyone needs to know it because you're, what's so powerful about what your story, what you do with your story is that it's not just the story of, oh, I was living the lesbian lifestyle and then I turned straight or something. Like, you know, I think a lot of people think, oh, well, that's just some Christian propaganda, right, you know, to right. try to twist people's arms. Christians and not be, are going to try to make you be, straight. Not make you true to yourself. But yeah. your story goes to a much deeper question oh. of what it means to be human and what it ne means to be in relationship with God. And so before we dive into the culture stuff, because I do want to get to some of the pop culture stories and news stories that I think need to be talked about, mm -hmm. what what is at the core of one's identity? And why, why are sexual attractions, I think some people caught up in LGBTQ plus I, whatever ideology mm -hmm. think, my sexual attractions are core to my identity. Why are sexual attractions actually not core to one's identity? Mm -hmm. And what is core to one's identity? Well, I'll go back to scripture. Like we are made in the likeness and image of God, right? And so the core of our identity is going to be God himself right? We are made in his likeness and in, his, and in his image. And sexuality is part of our human expression. And to say that it's not and to suffocate that or to push it down um, is not God's way either. But, but to say that my sexual attraction is who I am is actually just doing a disservice to your very self because you are so, we are so much more than our sexuality, right? Like it's a part of us. It is absolutely. Um, but every part of us is supposed to come into the, under the lordship, right, of God himself, because we're made in his image. He's not made in our image. And so I think really what we're kind of doing sometimes when we we allow our attractions, whatever they be, and, and I would say this honestly, even to those who have in line um, sexual attractions that line up with the Lord's ways, sometimes they can make their sexuality, their heterosexuality, their identity. And guess what? Just as wrong, because they're still missing out. 
our identity actually was purchased by Jesus. It was something that was actually shed on the cross. It's the blood of the lamb that actually brings me back into right identity, right? He paid the price for me and for you while we were still sinners. He died for us. And so for me to take on anything that doesn't look like Christ and then identify myself as that is just, it's almost like lashing him again on the cross. It's the, the very thing he died for was sin any type of sin, whether it be homosexuality, whether it be idolatry, idolatry, any of this, right, that he gave his life for. Um, and so I think really what makes me sad, what makes me sad is when I see someone identifying as, well, I'm gay. Okay, well, this is, this is your inclination. This is what you're drawn to. This is who you're drawn to. Um, but do you know you're more than that? Do you know you're more than that? And, and that is where I don't know that we as Christians sometimes do the best job mm -hmm is actually telling people that there's more. There's more. I'm not saying let's just ignore that, but hey, there's more. And when we start to experience like that God actually really loves us and that he's for us and he's not against us, and we learn that we actually can come into this son-daughter relationship as beloved sons and daughters, we start to experience a fullness of life. And it's not just hinging on something that honestly could change. I, I know people that had no counseling or anything. They once were dating the same sex, and then they met someone of the opposite sex, and they fell in love. There was no conversion therapy. There was no you know, counseling or anything going on, but it, it changed. So now who are they? I think the LGBTQ ideology may say, well, they are bi, or maybe they are you know, uh, poly, like they'll, mm -hmm. they'll kind of All these switch. Yeah. yeah. They're, 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 you know, they're on us, some sort of a spectrum of sexuality. So there is some identity for specifically that person who thought they were attracted to the same sex and then ended up falling in love with the opposite. Right. But see, I think that goes back to, cause the world's always trying to put a label on us. The world's always trying to tell us who we are when God himself has already said who we are. And so if we're not rooted and grounded in our identity as beloved sons and daughters, we're going to probably pick up these other things and let the world label, you know, in 10 years, these, these labels are going to turn into something else. We were not created to be constantly changing like that. Like we're in a world that's always changing. And so the world can only offer us these new titles, these new names, these new things, but it's, it's, we're just living less than if we're, but I would say the same. I would say the same to someone who says, I'm a lawyer, right? Well, amen. Awesome. I'm so glad you're a lawyer. This is beautiful. It took a lot of work. But what about when or if you ever get fired? Or what about when AI takes over and you're no longer needed? Mm -hmm. Who are you now? Who are you now? So this is not just around sexuality. This is sometimes even over the gifts and talents God's given us or the careers he has us in or the, the you know, one commission you have right now in your life. But when that show goes away or that whatever, even, even for me, oh, I'm a speaker. Well, what if I get canceled. Who am I now? Or what if we physically lose our ability to speak? I mean, right. I think about Joni Erickson Tata as an example. I was just talking with a friend of hers, Renee Bondi, who mm. was a paraplegic. I mean, she became a paraplegic, I think, months before she was going to get mm. married, or maybe it was even weeks. Yeah. Freak accident. And her whole idea, idea of her identity as a singer, as a dancer, right. mm -hmm. was dramatically Dawn. changed. And she had to wrestle with that core question of, who am yeah. I? Who is Renee? Mm -hmm. Celine Dion. It breaks my heart. I was watching her and I'm like, I pray to God she knows she's so much more than her voice. She has a gift. She had a gift. And who is she now? Like, and that's She where can't sing at all anymore? It's, yeah. I mean, it's, she has a hard time even like speaking, let alone singing. And, it, and it's so hard to watch because when I've seen just very brief things, I see a woman that was so standing tall and, you know, just amazing in different ways. I'm not talking morally or getting into that, but she just had such a gift and she used it. And now she doesn't know who she is. She's lost her identity because it was rooted in something that was part of what made her up, but it's not the fullness. Mm. See, like if I, God forbid, lose my legs and my arms, I want to be so rooted that I belong to God, that he paid for me at a price of his own blood. And then he says, Kim, you're worthy, even if nobody else says you are. Well, I think the other part of it is is human happiness because we want so badly to be happy right. and feel fulfilled. And so we think that all of these things, whether it's sexual identity or attraction or interest or a relationship or mm -hmm. a talent we have or a status we have or a material good that we have, 
or an experience, like a great, like a great vacation or something yeah, yeah. experience we have, we think that that's going to bring us meaning and, and value. And sometimes these things can, yeah. but in the ultimate sense, God is the ultimate value and the ultimate meaning. And mm -hmm. we only experience the fullest joy and peace through him. Right. And he's a good father. Right. So even if we lose certain of these things in this world, he's going to have the best for us in eternity, Absolutely. but we got to go through, go to him. Right. We have to trust him for it. Well, I think that's even why the scriptures go back to like, we need an eternal perspective. And that's just hard to have in a very temporal world, right? Like we do, we need to have, I remember I was just, I was talking to a friend a few days ago and she's like, I, I'm so scared of death. And I said, there was actually a saint that said, remember thy death, like every day. Memento mori. Yeah. Like this is real. Like we don't know how long. And, and so if my, my very being is rooted in my sexuality and, and nobody likes me or then who am I? And, and we're created. That's the thing. We're created to be seen, known, loved, chosen, desired, and pursued. God gave us those desires, and he wants to fill those desires with himself. I, but I say this too, not just about the LGBT community. I think it's the human race in general. I see so many of my friends that are married, and I've heard some of them say, oh my gosh, I would die if I lost my husband. My life would crumble if one of my kids went out of the church or, or if I never got to see them. So you're, so it's idols. It's idols. And anything can be an idol. Anything. That's a Even thing. the things Even that the God created good things. Yeah. Absolutely. So what do you say to people that express, you know, maybe they're listening like, yeah, I agree with your, you in theory and kind of what you're mm -hmm. saying here, but I don't think that acting out on same-sex attraction or any sort of attractions outside of the rubric of marriage, man, mm -hmm. woman, lifelong, open to life yeah. marriage, right? So the, the Catholic church isn't just saying, oh, yeah, gays can't the, have yeah. sex. No. They're saying no one can have sex right. or do anything sexual mm -hmm. unless it's with their spouse that they're married right. to for life and open to and life open with. To life. Yep. And that's that's pretty exclusive, not just for people who consider themselves straight or, or mm -hmm. bi or gay, but also for people who consider themselves straight. Yeah. The reality is we all are called to chastity We're all in and outside of marriage. Absolutely. The very best way to start your day is with a steaming cup of coffee, but not just any coffee. You're going to want to drink seven weeks coffee because it is the most delicious coffee that you will ever taste. If you go to sevenweekscoffee.com today, you'll see all the different blends and roasts that they have, but this is low acid, gourmet, ethically sourced, small batch roasted, delicious coffee. It's what I love to drink in the morning and you're going to love it too. What I love about sevenweekscoffee.com is not only is it ethically sourced and the best beans, they use the top one to 2% of all beans in the world to make their coffee, but seven weeks coffee also gives a full 10% of all their revenue directly back to the pro-life movement to pregnancy resource centers. In fact, they are almost hitting the milestone with your help of a half a million dollars, $500,000 donated directly to help moms and babies in need. You can be a part of this by going to sevenweekscoffee.com today. You can pick your favorite subscription of your favorite blend of coffee. My favorite is the medium Ethiopian roast. And if you become a member of the Heartbeat Club, meaning you're going to get coffee delivered to your door every single month. You'll get a full 15% off your order. And if you use the code Lila at checkout, you'll get another 10% off your order for a full 25% off your first order of seven weeks coffee. So go right now to sevenweekscoffee.com, pick your favorite coffee blend, put in your order, use the code Lila at checkout for up to 25% off your first order. Know that you're not only drinking a delicious cup of steaming hot coffee in the morning, but you are supporting the pro-life movement, giving back 10% of everything that you order to help moms and babies in need. Go check them out today. That's sevenweekscoffee.com. You are going to love this coffee and you're going to love this mission just as much. What do you think, how do we communicate or how, how would you explain this to someone who says, okay, I'm with you. Okay, sure. Monogamy. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. even with you on the monogamy thing, but why is it wrong to have a relationship with someone of the same sex? So I think it goes back to who's God, right? See, I have, a, I have a problem when people are like, well, you can't say what sin is. Well, actually we can. We can because God said it. So I'm actually, I'm not saying what is and what isn't sin. I'm repeating what God has said is or what isn't sin, you know? And so I think for me, a lot of times when it, when it comes to that, we have, we have to be sensitive to make sure we're not just kind of selecting which sins to talk about. Because see, even as a church, we talk a lot about homosexual sin and this, that, but are we talking a lot about the sin of contraceptives? Are we talking about, you know, that I, I remember I got on a call with, with a, a young woman, just amazing young girl. She considers herself, 
you know, a believer um, in Jesus. And she doesn't call herself Christian because she said they're, they're two faced. They're, they say one thing and they're living another. And I said, well, what's going on? She said, well, I'm gay. And I said, okay, so let's, let's talk. And we kept talking and, and she said, you know, why do you have a problem with homosexuality? Why, why do you think it's a sin? I said, because we're not open. Even if I'm open to life to happen, it can't happen because it's out of God's order. So yes, I might be open to life naturally with my partner who's a female, but God would have to go against his own design. He did that once, and that was to bring the Savior of the world, right? He's not going to do it again through me. And so in that, God's not going to go against his own design to bring life, even if I'm open and she's open. And so the- well, What if they say, well, te- you can use technology? Well, that's not natural. Now we're not telling you, know, and that's right. where it's out I of said, design let's, either let's way. Stay, yep. Let's just stay within design. Mm-hmm. And I said, but you need to you, you need to hear me loud and clear. I have just as much of a problem with a male and female who are married in the church and are not open to life. Right, because it's the same thing. It's rendering the sexual act sterile. Right. And so whether that's between two women who have a sterile sexual act, mm-hmm. period, because it's not mm-hmm. open to life, it mm-hmm. can't bring life or people that are intentionally doing it. Now, somebody might say, play devil's advocate and say, yeah. well, what about a couple that has infertility? Okay. <laughs> now, there's certain things that you can't, are you still open to life? Did you make yourself infertile, right? Now, some could say, well, I used to be on you know, birth controls and things, and now it's affected my body. Well, if you're asking the Lord and you're doing what you can to- To heal. To mm-hmm. heal, and for the Lord to heal you, then it's in his hands, right? But that's not God going out of his own natural order and design. Two females in in history naturally have never had a baby. Two males, natural born males, have never had a baby without humans getting involved, right? And so we just have to, we've got to kind of trail back. But I will say this, this young woman, I love her so much, but she said, thank you. I said, what? She said, I've never met a Christian. I've never met a Christian that has stood ground across the board. Mm. She said, usually they're really willing to stand on homosexuality, but they won't touch it when it comes to their own stuff. Wow. And I was like, girl, I'm sorry, but... Or or I've seen it among, and some, I would say, kind of in the faith-based world, it's a kind of Protestant evangelical space, mm-hmm. there is some... I, I come up, I mean, red pill is a strong word, but there's this sort of ideology about sex mm. where anything goes in marriage. As long as you're married, you can do whatever you want. Oh, yeah. And then usually it's very much male centric in terms mm-hmm. of woman, just please your husband, yep. period. And yep. whatever you want, whatever, whatever he, he wants, wants mm-hmm. you do. And that's also not the Christian no. vision. That's not the natural no. order, uh, even because that's not the love of the church. That's not you're the like, love no. of the church mm-hmm. because there's a design for chastity. And chastity at its core is self gift. Yeah. And seeing the other person as a gift right. and being willing to lay down your life for that mm-hmm. other person. And that that's including in sex. Like you want to be focused on the other person, not right. just your not own just pleasure. You need or if desire. it's all about you and your own pleasure, yeah. you're objectifying your own spouse. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, I think that can infiltrate even Christian marriages if you're objectifying absolutely. your own spouse instead of seeing them as a whole person that you want to love and serve. Yeah. And, and I think where we're hurting a big group of people are those who do struggle or embrace um, homosexuality that we're talking all about the sins within their sexual struggles, but not within yeah, heterosexual struggles. And it and it's just wrong. It's wrong in God's eyes too. I mean, we look through Romans. He goes through a whole list mm-hmm. of sexual sins, of drunkardness, of gossip, <laughs> right? Like all these things, but yet we're like, oh, well, yeah, those are normalized. Well, guess what? The world's trying to normalize every other sin too. We're not, we're not going from the standard of the world, right? We have to get back. And and one thing I did bring up with her. And it wasn't to win a point. It was to express God's heart. I said, what's sex for? What is the purpose of sex? We have to get back to that. What is it is to reproduce. It's to be fruitful and multiply. And because God is so good, he's like, and I'm going to make it pleasurable, right? And, and that's it's bonding to, and it's for bonding. the people that are the parents of exactly. this new life, potentially. But it wasn't just for bonding, right? It wasn't just for bonding. There's, there's a both and. And so when we remove the openness to life, we've actually changed the equation that God put out for us. I mean, and you, you're you talking about this all around every day. No, but I like but, to hear you talking about it. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, no. Like, you're doing great. We're now yeah. seeing children yeah. as a consequence. Yeah. No, that was the whole yeah. purpose. It was to be fruitful and multiply and connect. That's why the language spouse. of unexpected pregnancy, yeah. unplanned pregnancy, accidentally got pregnant. No. It's, it's like, it, it worked. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful, and, and we... 
imagine a society where when a child is conceived, there's celebration across right. the board. Yeah. Maybe some stress because it's, you well, know, it's multiple yeah. other kids and, you know, pregnancy can is not always easy, obviously. Mm -hmm. And this is a big responsibility and Huge. a sacred one. But we know that life is about the most meaningful things, which is relationship and love. And so we celebrate a new life right. instead of looking down on well, a new life. And look at how that would hit identity. When you as a little one are celebrated from the womb, out of the womb, growing up, man, do you start to feel cry. loved and seen and known, yeah. even though life is hard, even though life had to change, you know, but like now that little human is celebrated from the womb on, mm -hmm. their identity is even being affirmed even inside the womb. That's why, uh, you know, when we, and I've had girls reach out to me over the years saying, oh, I'm pregnant. What do I do? What do you say? You know, DMs on Instagram or meeting girls. And I always make sure the first thing is congratulations. Yeah. Even though I know if they're in a place of stress and fear, because then the next thing it's is true. like, I know you you may be struggling right now. Yeah. Like I want to help you and yeah. support you, but we never should lose sight of this is a mm -hmm. gift. Right. right. This is a gift and God has a plan for you. Yes. And for that little one. And for that little Only one. Only he brings life. Yes. And, and I think when we lose sight of that, we're going to lose sight of sexuality because right now, if, if baby isn't, um, the gift, then sex now what's sex, right? So it just starts to pull the thread of what God has, has designed. And so I think I, some people are like, Kim, that doesn't, that doesn't correlate. No, it does. It does. Cause sex is not just for pleasure. Sex is not just for connecting. It is for procreation when God brings it. Your job is just to be open to it. So, and marriage is also not just for pleasure. No. And it's no. also not just for connecting. It's for a project of we're going to grow together and serve God and others and mm -hmm. get to heaven. And hopefully, mm -hmm. if it's his, we'll bring other souls along with us. Yep. yep. It's yep. always about more than just me and yeah. my immediate feelings and my pleasure and my immediate desires. But our world is not so others focused, right? Myself included. Myself included. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, but, yeah. but so I think that's, yeah. the, this is a big picture we're, issue. This is what we're working on. Yep. Okay. So thank you. That was yep. beautifully shared. And so boldly beloved, we're going to link it. Is there a website? Oh. Yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. Boldly I'm so, beloved. I'm, yeah. I'm so excited about it's it. It's so needed. Your voice is so needed, Kim. I just, I love you and I love what you're doing. We're going to talk about a few stories that are in the news right now okay. and get your perspective on them and just chat about them. Everylife.com is America's fastest growing baby diaper company. I love everylife.com because they not only make amazing products, these diapers are leak proof with great quality materials, but this is also a diaper that is made with love by a pro-life company that is giving back to the pro-life movement. So when you go to everylife.com, you set up your diaper subscription for that little one in your life that you love. You're not only getting an amazing product for your little one, but you're also supporting the pro-life movement. Did you know that companies Companies, unfortunately, like Pampers and Huggies are owned by conglomerates that actually are pro-abortion that donate money to groups like Planned Parenthood. Not so with EveryLife. EveryLife.com is not only a best-in-class product for babies, but it also loves babies and supports babies by supporting the pro-life movement. So go to EveryLife.com today, order your diapers and wipes subscription, or gift a friend who might need diapers and wipes for their little one, and use the code LILA at checkout for 10% off your order. That's everylife.com and use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. So obviously there was the Olympics opening mm. ceremony. So we're going to watch a little bit of a clip from there. Okay. Which I've never seen. You haven't seen. I okay, have clearly heard, time. but I haven't Let seen. Let me see if I can pull this. Um, so... One thing Ooh. I know there was a lot of pushback by people saying, and I even posted about this when this came out and I was like, you know, this is so, this is so sad, quite yeah. frankly. And there were pushback saying, well, it wasn't actually trying to depict the last supper. You're taking this too seriously. This is about like the Greek festival Dionysus and like the, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the festival of wine and fertility and something. But then you go to the lead performer's Instagram account. And she's like, I was Jesus. And mm -hmm. like, you know, they knew they this knew was the last meant. supper scene yeah. that they were yeah. mocking. Like they knew the, 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 yeah. the um, entertainers yeah. involved. And then actually the Olympic ceremony ended up doing some sort of a kind of a light, lightweight apology about it. But very lightweight. Yeah. What do you think? It breaks my heart. Honestly, what I see when um, when I see that is I see a group of people that don't know the Lord I know. Because if you know, if you know and you've encountered Jesus, you wouldn't have sat at that table. And so to me, what what I see is I see hurting people 
Now, I'm not saying there's not agenda. Satan is at work, but he uses people. He uses people. And so what I see when I see that is people who don't really know Jesus. They might have gone to church here and there. They might have be even been raised Christian. Maybe, maybe they weren't. Um, but I believe when you have a real encounter with Jesus and you really meet him and you experience his love for you in a really tangible way, you wouldn't do things like that. And so honestly, I feel God putting it back, even to me, of Kim, will you make sure that you do a really good job, please, of representing me in this world? Mm. Because if we can do that as Christians, and don't change his truth, because that's not a real representation, but if we can represent him well in this world, I think we're going to see a lot less of that. Evil's always going to exist, right? Mm. Um, but what that breaks you, my heart. These are, I mean, this, these are people's sons and daughters, you know? What do you do when people say, well, the way you're representing is hurting me because it's it's discrediting my identity? Because I think this is so tough, right? Because yeah. if someone says my identity is gay by whatever any number mm. of, of labels, right? And you say, well, that's not your true identity. Yeah. You have so much more to your identity. Like yeah. the, the, and 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 these these acts or this lifestyle is not gonna bring you the mm -hmm. peace and the joy that I want for you. But they see that as an existential threat of discounting who they, who they are. are. Yeah. Because they believe that that is who they are. Yeah. I mean, that as well makes me sad because I'm like, they're so set in the sand that this, or in the cement rather, that this is who they are, that you can't even offer something more. Right. And and to be honest. Okay, if you are upset with me, tune me out. If you're upset with me, walk away. I'm not going to chase you. I want to share the goodness of what I've what I found, who I've found, and how he's given me life and continues to, and how he showed me I'm more than my sexuality, I'm more than my desires, I'm more than what I do. I want that for you, but the reality is Jesus, when he walked the earth, he didn't force people. He never forced anyone, and evil still existed, and he continued to give his life. He let people spit at him, mock him, right? Beat him. And he's the, he died for them. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, help me, please. If, if some, I, I had a woman once, she just was kind of trying to rip me a new one. And I said, you are choosing to talk to me. She was upset about your ministry. Just me. Yeah. Just as a human because being. She had, she must've heard a clip or something out there. I don't think she listened to a whole interview. Meaning she didn't agree with your your position of I used to live the lesbian lifestyle Correct. now, not like she, she, yeah. that offended her. It offended her. Um, she thought I was hateful. And I said, listen, you have every right to hate me. Just get to know me first, then hate me. But you don't know me. Like you watch get coffee. Let's like for real. Like, let's just talk. And, and did guess she what? do it? Um, she was open. How do you uh, do that with a stranger in your DMs on Instagram? Well, that's a little different. I think you, you, well, we have to use discernment too. Of course, you can kind of tell when someone's just attacking. Oh, yeah. look, I had a Satanist reach out to me and wow. just, I mean, this email, I've never gotten something like it. I won't get into all the detail, but I prayed. I said, Lord, what do you want to say? And he just showed me the brokenness of this, of this young woman. And I just wrote back, I'm so sorry that you've been so hurt. And she wrote me, we went back and forth. She ended up... <laughs> Long story short, she ended up knitting me a beanie. She found my wow. nonprofit's address. She actually came back into the Catholic Church. I got her set up with an exorcist. Wow. Yeah, Kim. it's amazing. Like, it, but that's not me. But, but see, I could have been like, ugh. Have you well, shared that story before? Um, I. She actually just messaged me the other day. She's like, Kim, I really miss you. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I could go back. And I saved I, the email. We gotta pause for one second because right. that's just such an encouraging yeah, story. And I love, I love it. So she, she, she was would, desecrating the Eucharist. She would go into church, take the Eucharist and go do these demonic things at her house. And yeah. And she wrote you the email. She struggled with same-sex attraction. When she wrote you the email, she was she was mad at you in the first email? Oh, she, yeah, she hated me and she hated anything to do with anything that I was saying. But she took the time to email you. And you so, saw that as an open door. It, so that was my thing. I'm like, you know what? There's probably tons of people that hate me, but they don't reach out. Wow. I love when someone hates, thinks they hate me and they at least reach out wow. because at least they're saying, I hate you and I'm at least going to tell you. So now you're communicating to some degree. My next thing is, hey, can can you get to know me? And can I get to know you too? This isn't just a one-way street. Like we, we have to be able, just as much as I'm going to talk, I have to be able to listen too. That doesn't mean I have to agree. That doesn't mean I have to take on your, you know, ideologies or your morals, but can I listen? I have to ask when, when this Satanist, mm -hmm. now an ex-Satanist, yeah. thanks be to God, was yeah, emailing- Yeah, devout Catholic uh, now. 
but does she want to come on the show? I could ask. Ask her. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, you say, I already gave mm-hmm. you your debut. Yeah. I talked yeah. about you. You've been highlighted. Um, yeah, totally. So did when you were emailing with her, mm-hmm. I mean, you loved her. You you tr- you prayed for her. You try to see her the way God sees her. And I'm sure that influenced your communication with Absolutely. her. Absolutely. But yeah, Kim in my own flesh, without, I was like, Lord, give me your heart for this woman. Mm-hmm. You have to. Maybe it's sort of like a capacity question. How much time did you spend communicating with her? Love your neighbor. It's a command that's been given to us. And for hundreds of years, loving your neighbor through health care was an important part of living out your faith. In fact, health care in general was done by neighbors coming together to support each other and ensure that each other's needs are met. This is one of the reasons that I love Crowd Health. Instead of relying on an insurance company who may or may not pay for the bill, Crowd Health allows you to crowdfund so that your neighbors that you are in a community with can help fund those bills. What's amazing is that Crowd Health has funded over 5,000 medical bills in just the last two years. Crowd Health is your solution to the insurance companies and the big pharma companies that have created so much dissatisfaction in the healthcare world. The Crowd Health service team is there for you to help you with your medical bills, help negotiate the best deal with the service provider, and then help you crowdfund through the community to ensure that your bills get covered. Take, for example, a young woman in Tennessee who is 19 years old and who lost her fingers in a tragic boating accident. Crowd Health got the medical bills, negotiated them, and then went to the funding community. Her bills were completely covered by the Crowd Health funding community. Whether it's accidents like this one, everything from babies in NICU to brain tumors, the Crowd Health community is designed to support your neighbor when they are in need. What's so powerful about this healthcare is that it's done voluntarily through the principle of loving one's neighbor by all of the people who are bought into the system. Keep in mind, crowd health is not insurance. It's a system to better love your neighbor and experience a community in helping you with your health care. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com. And if you sign up today using the code Lila, you'll get your first three months for only $99. Joincrowdhealth.com. Use the code Lila to get your first three months for only $99. How much time did you spend communicating with her? I tried to balance. I I also set boundaries. Um, But you have to remember, I'm kind of a free agent for the Lord. I'm not married. I don't have children. I have a ministry in Ethiopia, but praise God, I have a team that runs that. And so my time, I don't see as my own. Mm. So if the Lord wakes me up at three in the morning, and he did, I woke up, he woke me up at 3 a.m. And he said, check your email. And I checked it and it had just come in. Yeah. And this has happened more than once. So so. so she had just emailed you at 3 Mm a.m., God told you to wake up. You woke up. You got this email from an ex-Satanist. She's full of hatred. You wrote her back. I'm sorry you've been so hurt. At what point was there a turn? Um, It was probably four emails back and forth in the course of 30, 40 minutes. Because it was was more like... Oh, you were emailing back back and forth? forth. She just had sent it. But but you guys sent multiple emails within a 30-minute time frame. I have the whole thread So you're emailing at night. And Mm -hmm. she's like... Middle of the morning. And she's like starting her conversion at night. Like, well, when did she start to turn? Like, when did... Oh, it it took some time. I walked with her. Wow. Um, I walked with her. I felt like the Lord. And I had to really ask, like, Lord, is this, do I kind of, and I involved another person, asked if she could walk a little wow. more closely with her. Did she have to go through exorcism? She did. Mm-hmm. Got her with an exorcist priest. Um, she went through some counseling. She's just been incredibly hurt. I mean, when I started to hear once the walls came down and she started to share her story, it broke my heart. I'm like, I probably would have been a Satanist too. Like, see, sometimes it's it's so easy. It is so easy to judge someone's actions. And and we're supposed to judge action. But what we're not supposed to do is judge the action and in the same time judge that person. There's a difference between what a person is doing and who they are. Who they are, God created. What they're doing, God probably didn't bless, right? But there is a difference. And so I was able to see this is wrong, but that doesn't mean she is. And what God showed me is a lot of times bad fruit comes because there's a really rotten or, or hurt broken root, right? And and as she began to share her life over the course of maybe two months, she started to open up of what she's been through. I was like, oh my gosh. And, and my dad actually used to say this when I was growing up. I was like, dad, you would never, you know, kill someone. Dad, you would never do this. He's like, Kim, never say never. And I said, what do you mean, dad? I know you wouldn't kill anyone. He's like, I don't know what I would do in extreme situations, Kim. And so I never really understood that, but I feel like the Lord's starting to unpack that for me. Like it doesn't justify what someone always does, right? It doesn't at all. It doesn't give someone the right, but man, does it open up a place of compassion 
I mean, the way she was treated, what she went through as a child, all in the name of God. Yeah, I think you're going to turn to another God. And right? when she was emailing you, the reason you caught her eye was because of the same sex attraction thing that she was yeah. struggling with. And she particularly mm -hmm. hated your position on that, it sounds like. She hated my position on it. She hated that she, I mean, there was so much hatred, mm -hmm. but it was actually a lot of hatred towards herself. See, sometimes when someone hates me, they just see a little bit of themselves that they don't like and they put it on me. And I just realized by God's grace, okay, yeah, they might just hate me. And I'm like, that's okay. Like you're allowed to hate me. I just don't want you to hate Jesus. <laughs> Meaning they see themselves in you, but you're free and you, they have, you have something they don't have, but they, they, they don't know maybe how to get it sometimes. And or, they think you're trying to take it from them. Yeah. It's in, almost in like a, a little kid. You know, um, I, I explained this and I'll, I'll be brief with it. I was trying to rip, I have a, a small wiener dog, <laughs> his name's Scooter. And uh, he loves paper products. He ate, he loves when a wet paper towel falls on the ground and he gets it in his little mouth, which is tiny, he's 10 pounds. And he takes this balled up wet paper towel and he tries to swallow it. And I don't know why, but he does. And I was trying to rip it out of his mouth because he's gonna die if he tries to pass this thing. So I'm trying to rip it out. He's biting at me. He turned into a little baby lion. Like this thing, he was biting me. He was vicious. And I'm like, Scooter, you, this is not you. And all of a sudden I'm like, what do I do? I mean, do I just let him swallow it and die? Like, you know, sorry, PETA, but like, I don't know what to do here. And right away I was like, God, what do I do? And the Lord's like, give him something better. I was like, Scooter, jerky. He loves beef jerky. And the Lord's like, and he like, tweaked his head and looked at me. And the Lord's like, get the jerky, give him the jerky. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. So I ran to the kitchen, grabbed jerky, threw it on the ground. Guess what he did? <laughs> Puked up that paper towel and he ate the jerky. And then he just looked at me and he wanted more jerky. It's a weird analogy, but it really happened. No, I and relate. God, <laughs> yeah, and God showed me, <laughs> we sometimes try to rip things from people's mouths, from their lives. Like, give me your sexuality, give me your whatever, give me this, you know, and I'm going to give you something better instead of just saying like, Hey, here's something better. And I'm not just going to tell you about this something. I'm going to actually carry this something in front of you. And it needs to become experiential. When people start experiencing Jesus, experiencing him, hear about him and then experience him, it's pretty amazing what will start to drop out of our mouths and out of our life. And I think that that approach in my life is how God's worked with me, is he's given himself to me. And I've started to experience him and I'm, I'm watching. I'm not dating women anymore, not because I'm afraid of hell. Hell's real. It's absolutely real. And, and I don't believe God sends us to hell. I believe we either choose him here on earth or we don't. And if we're not going to choose him here on earth, why do we want to be with him for eternity? If he's not good enough for now, why is he good enough for eternity? And so we actually just reject him, right? And so we reject heaven. We reject Jesus and we reject all that he has for us. And so in that, but when somebody experiences him now, it's amazing what will start to lay down. I am not dating women because I'm, I've tasted and seen a better love, a deeper love, the love that my own little soul actually has been longing for since, since I was born. And so I think sometimes people are upset because you're trying to take the only love they know. This is the love they have. This is what they're holding on to. And, and so the approach that I try to take is, I'm not trying to take anything from you. Can you try this? Can you, can you try? Can you experience this? And some may reject, and that's okay. I'm not going to jam it in their mouth. And then there's some that say, okay, I'm willing. That young woman was someone who was willing to give Jesus a try again, to give him a try again, because the way she was raised was not truly him. When, it's, so. it's so it's so beautiful, Kim. I mean, it makes me think of this guy that I was talking to a few years ago in Los Angeles, and he was involved, he was in entertainment and he was involved in, he had moved to LA for the gay community, basically, mm. or LGBTQ. Yeah. He, I think he considered himself queer. But I remember him talking about how he had found people that he could just be with. Mm -hmm. And before he was no one he could just be with. Right. And he spoke with such tenderness about people that he could just be mm -hmm. himself mm -hmm. with and mm -hmm. have fun with and yeah. get to be into makeup and entertainment mm -hmm. and all the things he was into. And, you know, obviously we were talking about faith and sexuality, but I wanted to, you know, what community could I give him? Right. You well, know, like I couldn't in that moment give mm -hmm. him community. I could just talk to him, but... Yeah. 
I mean, that, that could be a, a little tiny piece of it, but you know, he, he needed a family, he needed right. love, he needed right. support system. So I think, you know, the, the power in, in a way of the LGBTQ plus a, you know, I, whatever identity, ideology, everything is that it does involve a community. Mm -hmm. They belong. And, and they, they, they have said, this is your label and you mm -hmm. belong. You have a seat at the table. And that's why it's so stinking attractive to so many people. Literally seat, seat at the table. Look at that. Full circle. Mm -hmm. Where is the church today? Where does the church have a seat at the table for these people who struggle with whatever? Well, I think it doesn't that's mean where, celebrate the lifestyle. That's where Pope Francis, I think, has been so controversial, but mm -hmm. he's trying to do that. Yeah. And again, I, I, you know, I, I'm sure there's tons of opinions in the comment section. You guys, yeah, what do you, what do you all up? think? You, just... you know, we ought to, I mean, as a Catholic, yeah. I respect the Holy Father, pray for him every Absolutely. single day. It's our yeah. job. He's our father. And he's not perfect. Um, and he, no one's mm -hmm. perfect, but he has not changed the faith or morals Amen. of our, you know, the, the mm -hmm. teaching of our church. Even in the recent documents. But I think <laughs> some of the things that he's done is trying to create spaces mm -hmm. And I'm not saying for, for it's for better or for worse. I think there's, you know, you could argue maybe the jury's out on his particular approach because he wants to, he knows that this is one of the prevailing ideologies today that is seizing the gener a generation of people who think this is how they belong. This is how right. they identify. This right. is how they exist. So here's the sad part. When you enter the LGBT community, you are welcome. You belong, all of that. You no longer agree and you're out. Mm. See, the church you're shouldn't a bigot, look like, actually, yeah. and you threaten their very existence exactly. by denying the ideology. So it's very vicious when you when you're out. And we sometimes, yeah. as a church, can look like that too. I think we can learn a lot. Now, <laughs> again, there's there's the difference. We can learn about wow, all are welcome, and all are supposed to be welcome at church. Does that mean we welcome everything the human being does? No, not in you, not in me, and not in them right? And we're supposed to love each other into wholeness. We're supposed to lovingly correct each other and draw each other higher. But where are we maybe not doing that? One of the movies that I feel depicts this so well, and I, I don't think we talked about it last time, was Jesus Revolution. In that movie, it was a group of people that I believe today is kind of the modern day Who was day the lead actor of that film? Jonathan Rumi, okay. I think it was. Yeah. Yes. So he did, he did pretty good in that film, right? I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard phenomenal. He, yeah. Okay. Yes. He did a great yeah. job. And I knew about Lonnie Frisbee, the character he okay. played before this movie came out. And so he nailed it. Got it. Good job, Jonathan. Okay. So in that, the, but this group of people were outcasts. Mm -hmm. They were the hippies. They were like, you know, and then Lonnie Frisbee had an encounter with Jesus mm -hmm. and then he started to seek after Jesus. And then all his hippie friends wanted to come. Guess what? Church wasn't so welcoming. They smelt. They weren't wearing shoes. They Some of them were still coming off their high. It's a phenomenal movie. I think we need to watch it because I think it is honestly, I think it's a little bit of God's grace to say, hey, watch this because there's another group of people that don't feel like they fit in, that are lost, that are broken, that are seeking. And is the church open? And then how do we, how do we walk with each other in our brokenness? to Christ and with Christ. And I do believe the LGBT, com LGBT community right now is kind of the modern day hippies that is looking for home. Mm -hmm. They're looking for home. And we know that there is one home and it is an eternal one. And God wants them. God wants them. And, and when they experience, when people experience the goodness of God, we let go of the less than good. And we let go of the less than loves because we found something greater. It's so beautiful, Kim. It's very, I, I want to keep talking, but I think we need to let her go, right? Because it's, we were going to watch the, the we're going to have to come back on the show, yeah, Kim. Yeah, we'll do it. It's 3.37, yeah. Mm. Um, we got to do this again, Kim, because we so, only got through one news story. <laughs> yeah, right. I think we had like four gonna, on the We're going to do it again. I know you're in Dallas, but yeah. you know. I if, love California. I get to come California. back and see my family. Come so. back and we'll do this again and again. But Thank thanks. you. Thanks Absolutely. for being open. And thanks for listening so intently for God's voice. Mm. I, uh, one last thing. What's what's your best advice for people to be able to hear God's voice the way that you hear His voice? Let Him love you. Don't don't try to. I just said this to a, a sister yesterday. I said, God speaks a lot. Don't try to complete His sentences. He speaks a lot. But see, I think sometimes we try to figure out what He's trying to say. Just let Him keep speaking because what it's doing is it's actually growing your trust. It's growing your relationship with Him. Like I have these new feelings in my heart starting to, to form that I never had before towards men. And I'm like, oh my gosh, now he wants me married. God's like, hold on, I'm not done talking. Do you trust me? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you speak. And so just like trust that he wants to talk to you. He loves you. He sees you. He knows you. He created you. Like he wants to commune with you. 
And, and, and if it doesn't line up with his word, you kind of have to know his word mm -hmm. so that you know, like, oh, well, that really was him. It doesn't mean he's speaking to you like just in Psalms, right? But when, when I hear from the Lord and I also know his word, I'm like, well, that didn't really align with his word. So that must not be him, you know? So we, we do have to know his word. Um, because then when he's speaking kind of freelance, it's going to be in line because he's an unchanging God. And so, yeah, but he it. wants to speak. Thank you, friend. Yeah. You're the Love best. You. Love you too. A huge thank you to our partner, EWTN. EWTN is the world's leading Catholic network, reaching millions with the truth about the faith, entertainment, and news. Check them out at EWTN.com.